Hello, everyone, and welcome to... Watching Gravity Falls for the first time. Yes! See, every time I just, like, the second before I say Gravity Falls, I think Twin Peaks. Well, we've already watched Twin Peaks. Like, I think of that every single time. Do you ever think that we should do uh, a series of watching Twin Peaks for the second time? I have considered it. Like, just continue to just milk that. Just like watching Twin Peaks for the Let's fourth do a time. Watch. Today, we're discussing the Pioneer Days episode of Gravity Falls. Irrational McKin treasure. Irrational treasure. Oh, like national Like national treasure. treasure. <laughs> irrational treasure. That's perfect. Yeah. Because they talk about being silly, being irrational throughout the whole episode. So what were, what were your impressions of this episode? Um, this episode was super fun. I feel like more was introduced here. Remember how I said, like, oh, yeah, there's, there's like, something big that's going to happen. And I do feel like something big happened this episode. We are introduced that there is a conspiracy going on in the town. Um, it wraps it up, but I also feel like it's important to note that the police are gone. They left the town. They're on vacation now. They're on vacation, and they were, like, in contact with some type of agency yes yes so they were talking on the phone to a man that was like in front of computers yes and uh the impression was that they they had a mission to basically find out where the body of quentin trembley is located mm -hmm. and then hide all of the ev evidence mm -hmm. they're going to send all the evidence to washington dc so the the man that we train. don't Yes, by train from Oregon. <laughs> so long. <laughs> and then they take a train for whatever their other destination is. Michigan. Oh, that's right. They're going to Michigan. <laughs> water park in Michigan. There's so many places to go to a water park, and they're like, yeah, Michigan yeah. sounds good. Uh, and we also see uh, we see more recurring characters, basically recurring ant antagonists. Yes. Because we see Pacific and Northwest again, which you predicted. was in the last episode. Yeah, you thought she would come back, and she's already back. And she, we also uh, assume that Gideon would come back, and he he comes back as a, like very foppish outfit with cur like a curly wig. Yeah, I thought. Here's my first impression of this. Mm -hmm. I think this was I thought the the funniest episode for me. Yes. Oh my I gosh, had... there's so many nice parts of this episode. Yeah. That are just like yeah, that makes sense. This is good. This is a good episode. Yeah, I, I started with the the marriage between a man and a woodpecker. <laughs> yes, and then it comes into play. Yes, it comes in when the president goes like, is that my third <laughs> wife? Did they call her Denise? Is that my third wife, Denise? They, here's something else that they said that I oh. didn't catch. Uh, they were looking, at, they when they were looking at the clues yeah. to decode the what turns out to be a map, mm -hmm. And they talk about the triang the triangle yeah. uh, being a symbol for flame. Okay, but on the paper, there's also that weird, like, doo -doo -doo symbol. And it just reminds me of um, the, the bobby pin that Grunkle Stan had in his mouth. Oh, yeah, you were saying that, because, uh, like, wait. Yeah. yeah. All right, so Man. here's the, remember they were talking about the, uh, uh, Nathaniel Northwest. Yes. So here's I will I have it on my screen. So I will read the uh, the report. Let okay. it here be recorded. Nathaniel Northwest, famous in his native Gravity Falls for standing in the park and hitting himself with a large <laughs> boating oar until he blacked out, was chosen to become the Patsy Mayor of Gravity Falls. Northwest spoke in a series of grunts and screams and often yelled his trademark phrase, I am going to eat this entire oak tree because I am a powerful wizard. Same, dude. Same. <laughs> it goes on. The fabled founder of Gravity Falls was, in fact, a fraud. His last moments on Earth were spent choking on a giant piece of oak of tree, bark, attempting to live out his dream he was hated by everyone who that knew him he will not be missed <laughs> oh my god oh oh wow 
Other historical truths include Thomas Jefferson was actually just two kids in an overall coat standing on each other's shoulders. <laughs> that's pretty good. Okay, there's, there's a little bit more that's worth reading on here. Oh, yeah? Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the current and forever president of the United States is actually Santa Claus. <gasps> Under the reign of Mr. Claus, America is not a democracy, but a jollyocracy. The statues in Mount Rushmore are actually gigantic presidential faced robots that will be called into action when America oh God, needs it the most. Yes, <laughs> I hope so. An enormous, evil, time devouring baby from another dimension is frozen in an Antarctic glacier. Oh no. Fortunately, glaciers never melt, so we should be fine. <laughs> Here's, an, here's another one. Writing jokes for cartoons is more important than sleep. <laughs> that one sounds like a personal yeah. issue. Yeah. If you, if you recite the Pledge of Allegiance backwards, you'll gain secret wizard powers. Oh, my God. That was good stuff. Heck, yeah. I don't know that anything's going to come into play. I think it will. I would love for a, you know, a two kid version of Thomas Jefferson, but uh, <laughs> I'm kind of interested in the fact that Quentin, Quentin Trimbley might then be, be the oldest human on, on the yeah. planet. Having might be. Or the, the baby. What? The baby. In Maybe the, the time devouring baby. <laughs> Glaciers never melt. Yeah. So we're good. So the recurring theme in this episode is that um, Mabel is self-conscious of her silliness, mm -hmm. but it's actually her silly personality that is solving all of the, uh, the clues along the way. Yeah, I really enjoyed this episode because it addresses like, oh man, we got to be serious. But in reality, a lot of things in the real, in the real world are very silly. Yeah. Uh, well, let me ask you this. Do you think that we will see uh, President Trimbley again? I hope so. He's pretty fun. I feel like he could definitely help out. Like, I know that he gave them basically all of the powers he had with the right, key. He has the key. He's got the He's key. He's got the key now. That works. And I got Which the impression pretty from incredible. The, yeah. From the baby Supreme Court that he was not remaining as president. No. Also, are the babies still alive, or was that a flashback? Was that a flashback I, I, when he got kicked my, out of office? My impression was that he <laughs> jumped backwards to ride a horse backwards back to Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. where they reinstated him as president, oh. and then he quickly established the things that he wanted to establish, oh. including the baby Supreme Court. Yes. And then that baby Supreme Court decided you know what, he should have never been brought back as president. Yeah, that's in, like, his term injustice was, was done. Yeah. yeah, he served eight terms, even, I mean, I mean, did he serve eight years? Yeah. But it would be, that's this would be happened. interesting. So what if we had a, in, in modern day, Yes. We, we have, someone gets elected president to, yeah. to be, serve in office for four years. Yeah, and, and say, then JFK is back alive. Yeah. So like so, someone, uh, someone was, they, they, their death was staged, mm -hmm. right? So, so JFK, his death was staged Michael Jackson. <laughs> and he's still alive and he finally escapes. He finally escapes area 51 or whatever. Yeah. And, and yeah. So, so you, I know you can't talk about secrets, but it's fine. No, whatever. I don't know anything. <laughs> So yeah, so JFK finally escapes wherever they've been keeping him. Uh huh. Uh, would JFK get to have three more years in office? <laughs> would the president <laughs> step down and say, JFK, you didn't get to finish your your four years? I feel like they should, like out of courtesy. Yeah. Speaking of conspiracy theories, as usual, we've gone way off topic. We'll fix it in post. It's fine. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to hit the end broadcast. See you next time, folks. Goodbye, everybody.